The first 20 minutes in this movie had me like, wow, this is promising. The rest of the movie, Hey guys, my name is Joseph Curtis, and if you love movies just as much as me, you have come to the right place. Now do me a huge solid and click that like and subscribe button. Also, if you want to follow me on the following social platforms, that would be great as well. Now, let's start talking Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Archaeologist Indiana Jones races against time to retrieve a legendary artifact that can change the course of history. Indiana Jones is one of the greatest franchises out there, one through three specifically. But Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, I happen to be a fan of. Yes, I know. But you can't do this to me. Don't hate me. The most popular action hero franchise of a man who wants to find items and bring them back to museums. Just the simplicity of a character like that is very endearing, and when I first saw the original films as a kid, it meant everything to me when my dad showed me the films. To find out, being directed by one of the best directors of today, James Mangold, I was extremely hyped for this film. And sadly, I left disappointed. My feelings after walking out of this film when it ended was, it's not terrible, but what was the point? I, I'm just getting to a point with Disney where it really feels like they're just milking this stuff. And there have been already thousands of videos of people saying Disney's woke and all these agendas and blah, 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 blah. This movie, it's fine. There, there's nothing forced in this movie that I found like insulting or annoying or oh my god, eye roll moment. I get it, Disney, you're political sometimes. No, at the end of the day, this movie was just boring. And I think that is the worst thing that can happen to an adventure film, specifically when it's one of the greatest, if not the greatest adventurer in a live action form, Indiana Jones. I am not lying. This has an amazing 20 minute opener with a train sequence with a de-aged version of Harrison Ford that most of the time actually works. And you got Mads Mikkelsen, he, he doesn't miss a beat. You, you, you give him a villainous role, or really any role, and he always kills it. There's really nothing wrong with the cast. Everybody does their part. Phoebe Waller-Bridges, the most controversial Indiana Jones character in a very long time. I don't hate the actress. I think she actually does a pretty good job with what she's given. The issue is with what she's given. Her character is extremely annoying. It seems like for majority of the time, Indiana Jones doesn't even like her. She just makes the wrong decisions and it doesn't feel like she learns anything by the time the movie ends. It's just boring. First 20 minutes can't save the movie. Not even the good chase sequences can save the film. And by the time you get to the ending, it's kind of cool with what happens with the device. There's a reveal with it, but it doesn't feel justified in the sense of this movie. It didn't really need to be made. Honestly, what movie really needs to be made other than money? I get that. But when it comes to the story of Indiana Jones, we already had a perfect ending. We don't need to resurrect this character. And I just found myself through majority of the film, just having that opinion of why are we watching this? Why are we bringing back this amazing character in a light that I just don't want to see him in? For example, in The Last Jedi, a lot of people complained about this, about Luke Skywalker. He's a hero in the original trilogy, but in this one, he's a sad, depressed, lonely man, and a lot of people had issues with that. They're like, this ain't my Luke Skywalker. But at least in that specific film, they did a good job putting him in the conditions that he's in, where it makes sense why he's emotionally distraught. This Indiana Jones, they say maybe a couple lines about his state of the world where he views himself. I don't get anything else for the emotional depth of this character. And then you get some good action scenes. Like, I don't want to seem like I'm... I hate this movie. I don't hate it. I just, I'm disappointed when you have a character like Indiana Jones and you just make this. And with that being said, I'm going to give Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny a 5 out of 10. Like I said, I don't hate this movie. And if you are an Indiana Jones fan, I still think you should check it out and get your opinion on it. You may think I'm wrong and that's totally fine. I actually want you to love this movie more than me. And shoot, I may go watch it again 
in the near future. I have no plans of watching this again anytime soon, maybe on Disney+. Plus, and I could have a completely different viewpoint on the movie. But for right now, I was disappointed. But it doesn't matter what I think now. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments section. And please, don't forget to like and subscribe. But most importantly, do not forget to be blessed.